Welcome back, Tyrants and Newcomers elect is So You've Decided to Be Evil, the epic Harry Potter fan fiction that we're reading. Uh, I'm here with... Hi, I'm LJ. How are you? Good. Lord Togami speaks. Yes. And also... Hey, it's Pink. Pink is here, too. <laughs> Doing my Marikuma voice again. Ooh, boo, boo. <laughs> and we have... Meredith! I am... I'm here. I'm not Lucius Chan anymore, because I... Is he even in the remainder of this, yeah. this Yes, story? you will yes. still be Lucius oh, Chan. I'm Ugu. still Lucius Chan. You're still Ugu uh... Chan. <laughs> All right. I'm the Ugu Queen. And we have a newcomer here. Howdy. Uh, I'm Glenn. I'm new here, and uh, I'm looking forward to having some fun with you guys. Yes. Noob! Noob! Silence! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been through the hazing ritual yet, but I'm under uh, told to. We have to put him through initiation. Yes. Uh, I understand that it involves a unicycle, a tutu, and at least three banana peels. Yeah, that's how everybody gets in the Let's Go project. <laughs> yeah, the that's the initiation to get in the Let's Go project. I remember in my initiation; it was horrific. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're like a big frat club here or something. Anyways, uh, so um, we have seen your comments from last episode, and Lord Togami is going to take some of them to do what we did last episode with the narration thing. I don't even know Very how Very well. Be grateful, I acknowledge you, plebeians. Anyway, <laughs> chapter three. Lord Voldemort does not understand the Black family. What a racist. Narcissa hey Malfoy was not pleased to be in the Dark Lord's presence. Despite her husband's constant claims that Lord Voldemort was really a great guy once you got to know him, Ugu. Narcissa was not complete, was not entirely comfortable around the, uh, man who had nearly sent her son to death. Apparently, the narrator turned into Jeff Goldblum. Still, <laughs> one did not refuse an invitation to the Master's Manor, to, to the Master's Manor House, if one wanted to continue possessing all non-essential limbs. <clears throat> Especially while Bellatrix w was preening under his attentions. So Narcissa clutched her husband's arm, avoided Cerberus Snape's smirk, and tried to pay attention to when the Dark Lord was telling Bellatrix. I wanted to run this by you and Narcissa first. Lord Voldemort said, doing his best impersonation of, of Florent LaBelle. I wanted to run this by you and Narcissa first. This concerns the two of you most of all. My lord! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, a venomous snake! <laughs> spoke, uh, am, I, uh, am I waiting for the liner notes? Spoke not spoke Narcissa while while doing while doing her best to be as whimsical as Cedric the Owl from King's Quest V. Father, <laughs> <laughs> that you have called me into your presence and find my opinion worth enough to take into consideration. Because she was really there so Voldemort could listen to her opinion. Rah. <laughs> yes, yes. Said Voldemort dismissively, and and as well as speaking like Ben Stein. Yes, yes. And as you all know, I have recently taken on a new apprentice. This is this was a nice way of saying that he had locked young Harry Potter in a tower and was forcibly teaching him the black arts after the unfortunate boy had rolled several sixes in a row during a deathmatch game of risk. Not as intense as a life or death game of Hungry Hungry Hippos, mind you, but <laughs> thus giving him command of all of East Asia and Europe. It has come to my attention that he does not have an appropriate name for a future ruler of the world. Both his sir and floor names are rather common. I have decided to <coughs> rectify this by changing his name entirely. Now there is plenty of evidence to suggest that young men are entirely incapable of choosing intelligent new names for themselves. For example, Mr. Half-Blood Prince here. Thank you, GLaDOS. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me," said Snape, speaking like John Travolta in Battlefield Earth. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> as if you have any rights. Voldemort went on as if Snape hadn't said anything. Before you can even spell your name, <laughs> this is where the two of you come in. If you have no objection, I would like for him to become a black. That was oh, Voldemort's that was line. That was Voldemort. Oh, my bad. I was waiting I because, know. like... Damn it, Peter! Damn it, Peter! <laughs> okay, 
Just as punishment, Voldemort went as if Snape had said and said anything, and said the following line doing his best Peter impersonation. Um, I'm not even sure. <laughs> Just <laughs> the... Hank, remember when he when he made fun of you in Wardner last night? <laughs> Oh my god, you have to bring that up. <laughs> okay, just speak Jeez. in a dumb voice then. Make it insulting. This is where the two of you come in. If you have no objection, I would like for him to become a black dude. <laughs> Bellatrix went from pleasure at being consulted to fuming silently at this sudden and unwelcome addition to her family tree. However, she quickly recognized that she really didn't have to say this at all. Narcissa, on the other hand, looked as if she was considering the matter. Hmm. She said, doing her best impersonation of Alucard from Helsing Ultimate. It would secure the Black family name <laughs> now that the wow, Black okay. is dead. Alucard on helium. <laughs> oh my god, it's Lucius Chan. <laughs> Agreed, Lucius, who was, who, who knew that, who knew that what tact was, but consi considered it something people should show him and not vice versa. Bellatrix balked internally at the gull of sisters and brothers-in-law, and bit her tongue. It was quite painful. Ow. Said Lord Voldemort to Sean Connery. I can't do that. She is <laughs> Just do the beard. Just do the beard. The beard's basically Sean Connery. Now, yeah, this is serious black hair. You should become a black and nominal. Uh, he's already got the house, the fortune, and the attitude. All he needs is evil. Oh, the star Added Bellatrix, deciding that, uh, that if this thing had to be done, it might as well be done right. What? Asked Lord Voldemort. Surely, my lord, you have noticed that the Black family of Feather's Gnomes taken from the glorious firmament arching over all who crawl upon the lowly ground. Except, of course, for Narcissa here, for reasons not entirely explained. My god, you sound like Sparks from Spyro! <laughs> 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 the original yes. Spyro, because not... Yeah. Not the oh, shitty Sp Legend of Spyro games. Oh, Spyro, what happened to you? <coughs> you were so... Good. And then... Anyways. Uh-huh. Said Voldemort, speaking like someone was stuffing a pillow into his face. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, what do you think that? Mimosa, I need you get the third pillow out of your face. Said, <laughs> said Bellatrix in a tone that suggested a question, but it was really more of a statement. Look. Mimosa. <laughs> said Voldemort while singing opera. Look, I said you could give him a star name. I didn't say you could give him a stupid name. Two, four, six, oh, one. <laughs> 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 the time is up. My great, great, great uncle Mimosa Black will be greatly offended by your disparagement of this noble man. Said Bellatrix, and oh god, she's annoying me, wounded to her very soul. <laughs> Fairies! <laughs> Mimosa! <coughs> 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 twice removed! <coughs> oh! Said Bellatrix, impersonating a parrot. Oh! Well, I won't do that, Squawk! So, she'll be offended, Squawk! <laughs> I'll be sure to add her to the list of people I need to apologize to when hell freezes over. Replied Voldemort. Rock that? Asked Narcissa. That's a star. Interjected a doubtful Snape. It's in Sagittarius, Ugu. Said Lucius Chan. <laughs> How did you know that? Asked Snape with great supply, surprise and lit and no lit and no little defensiveness. Fucking hell. Just because you got a dreadful in astronomy doesn't mean we all did, Ugu. Replied Lucius Sean with a little toss of his of his darling little hair. Sparkle, 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 <laughs> Ugu. Yeah. <laughs> said it's Voldemort. Said Voldemort impersonating Kenny from South Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
suggested Narcissa, sounding like Meatwad. One of the classics! <laughs> of his current status as savior of the wizarding world. Sung Voldemort to the tune of every day's great at your tuness. <laughs> Shall you stand in fate? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Said Bellatrix with increasing annoyance at Voldemort's continued dismissal of the time-honored black family forenames. Started Voldemort impersonating Elmo. Actually, I'll go look at that one. Not black. Sato. His, his Bellatrix Sato. What does that I mean? I don't speak Latin. <laughs> Hold on, I'll Google this. Sato Voci? I don't Google know. the Ugu. Uh, okay, okay. Google good. that. You have to Google that. Okay, okay, I got it. it okay. Sato Voci. Soto Vashi. Uh, of singing or, in, or a spoken remark in a quiet voice as if not to be overheard. Oh. His Bellatrix Soto va, va, da, Soto, Soto fuck Bashi. you! Soto <laughs> fuck you! Soto <laughs> fuck you! Utilizes a sonnet. Said Snape, who had just... who had to bring the whole room down now that Voldemort was actually considering a name. Well, be the worst thing a wizard's name has ever done. Replied Voldemort. So, what constellation is American, O oh great wise astronomer? Said Snape to Lucius Chan. The club, Ugu. Replied Lucius Chan, who had an expression on his face that indicated that he would be, be sticking his tongue out at Snape if Voldemort hadn't been in the, in the immediate vicinity, Ugu. Ugu. Used Voldemort as in the silliest villain voice possible. Bellatrix sighed as Voldemort swept from the room. Snape walked over to her, saying, Bellatrix, if it is any consolation, I can assure you that the boy formerly known as Potter is going to thoroughly hate this. That thought alone will give me many a frustrating imposition. I don't really care one way or another, said Bellatrix, who, if she couldn't change anything, was just going to pretend that she was above all this nonsense. Said Narcissa trying said Narcissa while while constantly singing flower stroking. Just wing it, wing it. <laughs> wing it. This means I'm going to have to plan a coming out party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a coming out party. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You. You, know, you know, I had suspicions about Narcissa's relation to Bellatrix, but really this comes out as big a surprise to me. Oh, but won't that be fun, you go? Ask Lucius, Lucius, Lucius Chan, Jesus, fuck! <laughs> his, his wife replied in a Scottish accent. But what kind of decorations does one get when one's guest of honor will probably be arriving in chains? Arthur. Oh, there's no one. Also, hey, about Strape's hey, astronomy, great. I hey. figure everything here is at least one of the blah. I decided to leave it to the astronomy and possibly ancient ruins. That's my job, you bastard. Chapter 4. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> also, about Snape's astronomy grade, I figured everyone had at least one weak subject, including Snape. I decided his would be astronomy and possibly ancient runes. Go fuck yourself, uh, Peter. Fine. Jeez. Alright, so oh, let's see wait, what's I'm in Draco, the next right? chapter. You're Draco. Yay! Chapter 4. Lord Voldemort insists everyone get along, which is incredibly lame. Dark Lord says that I have the makings of a first class psychop psychophant. Sycophant. 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 Okay. Yeah. Said Draco, me meditated meditated that. Pressing his <laughs> drop the bass. Wow, Togami can't say words properly, Daddy. Fuck off, fuck off, bear! <laughs> <laughs> Tentatively yeah. pressing his fingers together in a way to make him look as if he was about about to play. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Ew. 
<laughs> around the around the immaculately set table, all eyes turned to him, drinking in his every word, relishing the brush of glory he brought up to their lives. All right, so Zabini was rolling his eyes, but he was jealous because he'd never been in the presence of Lord Voldemort before. My father is currently the Dark Lord's second in command. I hope to prove myself to the Dark Lord so that when the day comes, I may topple my father and take his place. Draco took a moment to realize he was just ripping off the plot of Return of the Jedi. Damn it! <laughs> well, with powerful, powerful imaginable, power imaginable, and he, and no more named Truffle Talk from his father. Don't think I shan't be telling your father said a casually cruel voice from the shadow of, of one of the room's many doors. My lord! Cried Draco and his Slytherin brethren, rising, rising from their chairs and dropping to their knees in reverent fear. Draco kept his eyes on the floor, and Lord Voldemort's shoes as if, if he had cared nothing, nothing more than to gaze at the wonderment at the, at the crud flacking off of the, of the Dark Lord's boots. It took a moment to register with Draco that Lord Voldemort's boots were accompanied by a second set of footwear, a pair of imitation Adidas, to be exact. Draco blinked at the extra set of shoes and looked up to find himself staring it into the disgusted ca countenance of someone he definitely did not expect to see, someone he had rather hoped he would be was dead and rotting, or rotting and dead, either was fine, in a dungeon somewhere. Voldemort had tightly gripped had a tight grip on the hair of this very familiar looking companion. He also had an expression, if vocalized, would have translated into sing-songy. Luckily, Voldemort was not inclined to talk that way. Draco's mouth dropped open as he clambered to his feet. He would have li liked to have been been able to help it, it but he simply couldn't. Violence. Yes. Interrupted Voldemort, speaking like Cartman from South Park. Okay. Said Draco as if he was choking on his own hand. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Are you okay? You actually put your hand in your no, mouth? No, Why? <laughs> that just hurt my throat! That just really hurt my throat! Oh, I'm sorry. You wanna, you wanna <laughs> hug? Yes. Hug. Hug. <laughs> You get hugged by by Lord Togami. That'll be ten thousand dollars. <laughs> How about I give you? Oh, that works too. <laughs> Harry Harry Potter, known to the delusional psychopaths and their cowering flunkies as Merrick Black, because apparently Merrick's in this now, gave Draco a withering glance as if he attempted not to fidget it too much in Voldemort's he whom has no concept of personal space grasp. <laughs> Draco attempted to return the look, but he directly, but uh, but yeah, 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 but being directly under the gaze of Lord Voldemort stunted his ability to retaliate without getting cursed for his troubles, and I mean cursed as in naughty language. Yeah. Voldemort either ignored or did not notice it, the scathing looks as as he plowed on. This is my newest apprentice and designated heir. His addition to the Black family has been sponsored by Bellatrix Lestrange and Narcissa Malfoy, who will be providing the necessary documentation of his childhood and early education. My mother? Cried Draco, speaking only the language of whiny bitch. But what does my mother have to do with it? Oh my god. That should be Draco's voice permanent. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> agrees that a real flunty troublemaker such as Merrick, who has a natural place in the Black family, he has also turned out to be quite good at the dark arts. Continue Voldemort, continued Voldemort with a pleased smirk that made Harry's blood boil. Yes. Said Draco like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. I'd notice. <laughs> anyway, I Glad you are all familiar with each other, but in the interest of etiquette, allow me to make proper introductions. Merrick, please give your regards to Mr. Malfoy, Zabini, Knott, Crab, Goyle, and that young man next to Malfoy whose name I don't recall. Hello, 
Hello, Binky Boy. Harry is Bakura. Oh, Jesus. Merrick, my bad. Oh, my God, you suck. <laughs> hey, they look exactly the same, all right? Let's continue. Racist. <laughs> Said Harry, attempting to squeeze as much contempt as humanly possible into a two-syllable word. Wonderful! Now take a seat and socialize with your peers like a good boy! This, however, was was quite impossible, since Voldemort seemed in no hurry to release his death grip on on Harry's perpetually messy do. Are, are you going to let him go, my lord? Asked a very nervous Theodore not. It was Harry's turn to smirk. He's just jealous that I have hair and he doesn't. Ah! Try to remember where your head is, boy. Said Voldemort, relaxing his gri grip on Harry's hair. He turned to gaze to the children as fo followers and <laughs> and <laughs> and said in a rap battle fashion. Wait, rap? Yes, rap. Ah! Rap like you've never you rapped. to have a nice great tea? Get to know each other. Talk about Quidditch. Want to conquer the world? Whatever it is, boys are raised through these days. I'll be nearby to collect my apprentice when you're done. Yo! <laughs> Voldemort, Voldemort released Harry's hair and shoved him forward, then strode away laughing a high, cruel laugh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, God. I can't believe they're keeping you alive, Patter. Snarled Draco <laughs> the moment he thought Voldemort was out of earshot. You probably shouldn't call me that anymore, Binky Boy. Said Harry flatly, slumping in his seat and taking a steady bead on the ceiling. I refuse to call you by any name that implies we related, Patter. I really don't. <laughs> you got me doing the southern. <laughs> just do a bunch. Yeah, just do freaking southern. <laughs> I really don't care one way or the other. Said Harry, steadfastly refusing to look anywhere where but the but the stuco and speak and <clears throat> and speaking in the screechiest voice possible that Peter will be annoyed. <laughs> He's standing in the doorway behind you. Said Blaze, taking an, effect, an affectedly dainty sip of his drink. Draco start, started and unconsciously tried to look over his shoulder. Don't look! Snapped Don't Harry look, and Blaze simultaneously. Draco stopped himself and, and swept up his teacup to an attempt to convince the unseen Dark Lord that, that that was what he intended to do all along. There is an excess of dollars in this room. He remarked. Kind of drafty too. Added Theo. Look, said Harry as a pirate. Everyone shut up. Let's all just sit here in silence and protect this, pretend this isn't the most awkward thing that's happened all year. Arr. You, You've been the Dark Lord's prisoner for weeks and this is the most awkward thing that's happened to you. Asked a disbelieving Blaze. Harry took his eyes off the ceiling and leveled them at Blaze. It's been mostly surreal. He said like Jeff Goldblum. I mean, have you ever been in a room with Draco's father for more than ten minutes? Bizarre. That did not have enough art in it. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. Uh, I guess I was going for a different Jeff Goldblum role. Don't! Don't talk about Draco's father like that. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. Talking about perfectly timed. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry. Oh. Please forgive me, Peter Senpai. All right. 
snapped the young man seated on Draco's right. Harry hadn't paid him much mind until then, other than briefly wondering why Crab and or Goyle, the lesser, as didn't fl flank Draco as per usual. The young man looked like a badly made up model of Draco's third year. His hair was obviously bleached blonde, little brown roots and all, and, and was slicked back in a way that guaranteed top marks in the wind tunnel. His nose was t turned up at the most un uh, at, at, an, uh, at an almost unnatural angle. Harry thought that he might spe spend up to an hour a day in front of the mirror practicing his disdain. And who are you, Binky Boy? Asked Flambo asks Harry as flamboyantly as possible. He's a redundantly evil twin. This is Graham Richard, my personal assistant. Inter interjected Draco, talking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You'll be taking notes about this encounter, won't you, preacher? Yeah, that was way funny. too Russian to be. <laughs> I don't know what I sound like! I'm, just, He's I'm, going, off the Simpsons. I'm going off the Simpsons movie here, man. Anyway, yes, sir, cried Graham, pulling a tattered scroll, a quill, and some ink out of his robes. Harry sighed and pointed to the sec secretarial equipment. This is why wizards need pens, though I suppose there's something about magic that makes ball bearings and gravity not work. Harry shrugged in, ma ma in, in a mock helpless sort of way. Draco rolled his eyes. What are you talking about? That's Blaze. Oh, that's Blaze? I wasn't sure either. Okay. Wait. What are you talking about, Potter? Blaze coughed, ready to say a line, for, line very epically for the trailer. Black. Coming summer 2016. <laughs> All right, well that was those two chapters. Looks like we only got one episode of this left already. So uh, yeah, of course, uh, put suggestions in the comments for uh, how you want people to say things. And also, we're still taking suggestions for more fan fiction since this one's going to be done next episode. Yay! So rate, comment, subscribe, favorite, support us on Patreon, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye, Binky Boy.